Hello everyone, I thought I'd do a video this week, do something a little differently for a question of the week, which I'll get to in a moment. First of all, very, very interesting markets this week, uh, the stock markets, especially all over the world, but the United States stock market, the Dow, SPX off considerably, very scary, uh, could be called a crash by any measure, and then a rebound by the end of the week, silver hit a new low, gold looked good for a while, fell off, came back. So the metals are under pressure. The stock market has been under pressure. I think the main thing to understand is that the stock market was in what's called an indecision pattern. And now that it's broken to the downside, yes, it's recovered a great deal of that. But once it breaks, it starts to break psychology. And people that are sure this is only a correction, and it's up, up, and away, and things can only get better from here for the stock market, have a shadow of a doubt in their minds and many other technically or not, think that that could have been it and it's best to step aside of the stock market for some time. Time will tell. I lean more toward the latter than the former. The question a week was somebody asked me, why did I promote uh, Doug Casey's newsletter when I write my own? And the question of that is, uh, first of all, I pay such a high commission, I can make more money on a sale of his letter than I can on my own, which is, you know, interesting. The other thing is that uh, we've marketed to this list uh, more than once. In fact, we have a subtle sell almost every time we do a weekly update. But the last thing I really want to dive into is about the newsletter industry as a whole. When you go back into my early investing days in my 20s and even up into my early 30s, I was a newsletter junkie. And I bought probably every letter out there pretty much. Some were too expensive for me, but I subscribed to many. So I got a very good flavor of how they were done, who embellished their stuff, who always admitted when they were wrong, who did, who did what, and who was worthwhile. And so I got to factor in a lot of things before I started what I did with the Morgan Report. And you know, not too long ago, I'd say, oh, it's been a while, probably six, seven years ago, I got a phone call and a consultation. It was a gentleman that uh, had subscribed to the Morgan Report, still a subscriber and asked, you know, about a certain company and said that he was paying 10 times what he pays for us for this particular service. And did I know this company? And of course I said, yes, I did. I told him I couldn't give individual advice. And so we went on with the discussion. But what he didn't understand and many don't in the industry is he felt since that price newsletter was 10 times the cost of ours, that it had to be 10 times better, or at least substantially better, because he's paying so much more for the information. And the fact is, from my own experience, and from this gentleman's as well, is that in this industry, you don't necessarily get what you pay for. In other words, there are some letters out there that are in like the $25,000 range, that uh, I would say our analysis, as far as how to do equity analysis, is probably equal to, perhaps better than, and I know that's saying a lot, and I know it's me, so please factor that into your thinking. But the point being is that <clears throat> we do do our best. We certainly have a high intent to help you. Now, if the metals at these prices, and especially the natural resource sector, being as low as it is, I want to take the time to make a video. Not so much to subscribe to the Morgan Report or buy the Casey newsletter, but just to give an all-out sincere call from right now to you, from me to you. Take it as a personal message, if you will, that... If this isn't the bottom, and I'm not saying it is, it's so close, you, ought to, you could really consider value here and where we are and where we're going to be a few years out from here. So they say no one rings a, a bell at the top or no one blows a whistle at the bottom or whatever the crazy expression is. I'm going to tap the symbols or tap my foot as a metaphor. I say, look, I'm taking a little extra time this week to let you know that um, don't give up on the sector. If you're not in it, it's certainly looking very, very worthwhile because no one is interested in the sector anymore. Almost everybody that was in it has given up. And lastly, I'll just tip my hat or give a shout out as now called to Jim Sinclair. I would highly recommend that you Google uh, USA Watchdog or if you're already familiar with Greg Hunter, go to his website and watch the Jim Sinclair interview. He talked about where gold is going to go, and he talked about where silver is going to go, and he was very positive about silver, stating that it would, prob it would not that it probably would, but that it would outperform gold at a two, two times factor up to maybe a five times factor. 
So I think you should listen to that if you have the time. I certainly did. I actually watched it twice. And if you're in this market and you're feeling like, ah, uh, like I feel at times, you might want to watch that video and reassure yourself that you really do know what you're doing, especially if you didn't put everything you own in the metals, which I've never really advocated. Nonetheless, um, I want you all to do well. I want you all to prosper and I want you all to be aware that we're very close to the bottom of the metals and resource stocks. It might be an opportunity to at least take a look at them again. If you're not involved or if you've left the sector, to maybe think about coming back into it. Otherwise, I just want everyone to make a great weekend and know there's more to life than money.